Section 10.3 is on prediction intervals and variation. So a prediction interval is a range of values used to estimate a variable, while a confidence interval is a range of values used to estimate a population parameter. And the prediction interval, the requirement that we need for this is for each fixed x, the, co the corresponding sample values of y are normally distributed about the regression line, and those normal distributions have the same variance. Given a fixed and known value x sub 0, the prediction interval for the individual y value is y hat minus e is less than y, which is less than y hat plus e, with e being this lovely looking formula. Uh, the t score sub alpha divided by 2 times the standard error times the square root of 1 plus 1 over n plus n times x sub 0 minus x bar squared divided by n times the sum of x squared minus the sum of x squared. And SE, the standard error, is the square root of the sum of all the residuals, so the sum of y minus y hat squared divided by n minus 2. And T sub alpha divided by 2 is n minus 2 degrees of freedom. So for example, for the 147 pairs of pulse rates and white blood cell counts for females in data set 1 by data set, we found that there is sufficient evidence to support the claim of a linear correlation between these two variables. And the regression equation was y hat is equal to 4.06 plus 0.0345x. For a female with a pulse rate of 80, the best predicted blood cell count is 6.8. For a female with a pulse rate of 80, we want to construct a 95% prediction interval for the white blood cell count. Now mind you, we could certainly use that formula if we wanted to. Um, in SAS, when we have the data set, uh, we could use proc reg data is equal to the data set. This is temp uh, underscore temp zero point underscore zero one underscore body underscore data. Uh, we would use model, this is white for white blood cell count, is equal to pulse for the pulse rate, uh, slash CLI for that confidence interval, uh, for the prediction interval, excuse me, and then run. Uh, doing so will give us a whole bunch of data here, which is going to be slightly off than what we found due to the fact that this was just for females. This has all of them inside of it. But we could see that we obtained the prediction interval of about 3 to about 10-ish for the confidence interval for the prediction. So, which is based upon this first observation up here, since that was very close to what we actually found. But, for what we are going to say for this, that 95% confidence interval, um, prediction interval is going to be between 3.0 and 10.6. The actual interpretation of that, let me just type that in on here, is going to be if we select a random female with a pulse rate of 80, we have 95% confidence that the limits of 3.0 and 10.6 contain the white blood cell count. The explained and unexplained deviation, um, total deviation of the point x comma y is the vocal distance y minus y bar, which is the entirety of the deviations. The explained deviation is specifically the value of y hat minus y bar. So the explained deviation is between the point and the mean. The unexplained deviation is the vocal distance y minus y hat. So the actual point minus the predicted. And total deviation is just the explained deviation plus the unexplained deviation, which we could see 
y minus y hat, uh, y minus y bar is equal to y hat minus y bar plus y minus y hat. That cancels out to make y minus y bar. When we sum the squares of deviations using all points x comma y, we calculate amounts of variation. The total variation is the sum of the squares of the total deviation values. Explained variation is the sum of the squares of the explained deviation values. And the unexplained variation is the sum of the squares of the unexplained deviation values. So total variation is equal to the explained variation plus the unexplained variation, which is the sum of y minus y bar squared is equal to the sum of y hat minus y bar squared plus the sum of y minus y bar squared. The coefficient of determination is the proportion of the variation in y as explained by the regression line by the linear relationship. We could calculate that as r squared is equal to explained variation divided by total variation. A simple way of calculating it is once we find the, the correlation coefficient, just square it for the coefficient determination. Or SAS does indeed calculate it for us um, when we do the linear regression. It's located in this cell, for example. But let's say, for example, using the 147 pairs of pulse weights and white blood cell counts for females in the data set one body data data set, which unfortunately this is for everyone, so this value here is off, unfortunately. But we find that the linear correlation coefficient is r is equal to 0 0.221. All right. And we want to find the coefficient of determination and the percentage of the total variation in which white blood cell count y can be explained by the linear correlation between pulse rate and the white blood cell count. So r squared is simply just squaring 0 0.221. Tossing that into a calculator and, of course, rounding gives us an answer of 0 0.049. And let me just type what that means. This indicates that 4.9% of the total variation in the white blood cell count can be explained by the pulse rate. This also indicates that 95.1% is unexplained, which does not indicate that this is a good. This does not indicate that it's a good model at all, unfortunately. Let me know if you have any questions or concerns. Thank you.